Welcome to Bloody Good Horror, covering the best and worst of the horror genre since Halloween 2007. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of Bloody Good Horror. This week, we're going to be talking about The Other Side of the Door, a movie starring every dad, Jeremy Sisto, currently out in U.S. theaters. I'm the editor-in-chief over at bloodygoodhorror.com. First up, joining me tonight, no Mark, which means we actually started on time. Sorry, Mark. But we do have the other Chicago resident of this show. He drinks beer. His name is Joe. He is on mute. Fuck. <laughs> I was uh, I was told that this episode was going to be the second half of our peanut butter solution discussion. Right, just another. Not, we figured we'd spin it aware. off into another show. Yeah. Next up on the show, he's the host of the Instamatic, one of the bloody good horror spinoffs. He also is a author of horror fiction, and his name is Casey. Hey. And last up tonight, coming to us from New York City. It's almost that time of year where he can't turn his air conditioning on and has to swelt for the sake of his audio quality. His name is John Schnars. You know, I was in a great mood until you reminded me about that. Nothing gives state. me more pleasure than making you turn your air conditioner off. Oh, Lord. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be a special time. So we're here tonight to talk about the other side of the door. Right. John, a the movie. Door, it, it, the door has two sides. A movie Just that kind of squeaked its way into theaters like a silent fart. <laughs> um, it, yeah, that's actually really accurate. I don't, yeah, I had like, not. Oh, oh, well, there it is. Oh, huh? I had seen one trailer for this. Had you guys? I no. like. I don't think I had. Of, I didn't hear about it until Eric emailed us saying that we should do this. I know I talk about it a lot, but this is the rare case where I was sitting in a theater and had not seen a trailer. Uh, was there a lot of people in your guys' theater? I was one of three people. Four, and, but I it was I'm, a Sunday. Well, it was like three o'clock on a Sunday. So mine was like a Sunday at noon, and I'm pretty sure the other two people in there were a couple that thought if we're gonna go see a movie and screw, let's go see this one because no one's ever heard of it. So my theater has the, like assigned seats now, and I happen to pick a seat. So there are four seats, right? Kind of broken up into blocks of two. I happened so usually like people are not going to pick the one seat next to you unless the theater yeah. is full. Yeah, because they but show I, you which seats are right, available. But that's I what those two people seat, in my theater thought. Eric. But I picked the seat <laughs> attached to two people together, and there was only like two other people in the whole theater. So I thought about moving, but I was like, you know what? This was you're, the seat I wanted. So you're that's just creepy. a rule follower. Yeah, what can you do? Uh, this is so scary, isn't it, guys? <laughs> we, so I, I will say, and like I could tell the story Did later. You guys get I'll, popcorn? That looks good. Uh, I'll tell it up front. I had one of the like more annoying horror movie um, in theater viewing archetypes in my theater. It was the guy who thought it was. I don't know if he like thought he was being cool or what, but he laughed hysterically uh -oh. at every jump scare. Was his but, name like, Casey? <laughs> 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 But it was like so loud, like like it was like belly chuckling. But he was the only one making any noise, and so I'm like, I, it's just like, dude, it's I get it, like you think it's funny, but like, do you have to act like a jackass? I don't know. The whole thing, it, it kind of got to me. But I you sound real upset, John. Yeah. I was upset. I've tried to move on. Doesn't sound like it. <laughs> You're right. I haven't tried. To move on. <laughs> Here we are. Um. So, what do we want to talk about? Do anybody get any oh. new trailers? I can't. I can't think of a one. I did not get anything that I had not seen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which I don't know. We're kind of like there's a lot of stuff in theaters right now. There's a lot of horror coming down the pike in theaters, but it's nothing other. Well, I don't know. There's nothing that's like. Oh, you know what we talk crazy. about? What you know what came out was the Ghostbusters trailer this week. Uh, and we did decide as a show that we're going to review Ghostbusters. Oh yeah, for sure. It has ghosts. It makes sense. Uh, well, yeah. the um the first episode I ever appeared on was the uh, one where we discussed one and two. Yeah. John, I was not on that. <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, I guess that was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good story. Yeah, so, John, we're not going to just let these ladies remake our Ghostbusters without having a say in it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Can't be having uh, that. I mean, listen, it's still a man director, isn't it? I mean, it's <laughs> Hollywood we're talking about. Yeah. Paul Feig. Um, yeah. It's yeah, still got I, white people, right? I, I thought it was... <laughs> Oh, Joe. Damn it, Joe. Uh, I thought it looked pretty um, good. I'm pretty into it. Yeah, I, I thought it looked really funny. It. 
Really? If you told me we were going to talk about, it, well, my wife and I wanted to watch it together, and then we just didn't get a chance. And you it's... know, you're really lucky. Like, you don't use Facebook at all, right? No. You have a Facebook though, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, I checked in on the Bloody Good Horror Facebook. But page. because you don't use it, you don't see just like the legions of people. Like, I'm on Twitter, man. It's really like, weird I... because my Facebook is half nerds and half like family and friends. And the nerds post about things as if they are the most important thing on earth going on at that moment, like the Ghostbusters trailer. But mm-hmm. then, like, normal people don't give a fuck about the Ghostbusters trailer. Mm-hmm. I'm not making a judgment on it. It's just, like, a fascinating, like, thing about the way kind of your Facebook. I mean, dude, you've been on the you, internet YouTube for comments, like, I think, by far were, you know, pretty much just the dregs of society. Like, yeah, yeah. Ugh. They were finding everything to complain about without actually just coming out and say, like, I hate women. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. But like, well, oh, all right, whatever. I don't even, I don't even need to get into it. We're not going to open the whole can of worms, but I, the only, actually the complaint I saw that I found really weird was like that the people didn't like the CGI. Yeah. Which I, I mean, I just, kinda... I hate, and I know we've probably said it before, but I hate the comment. This is ruining my childhood. Like it's a fucking movie. All right. If that's like the highlight of your childhood, like your parents must've been awful. Like you, <laughs> you had terrible parents. <laughs> Like you never went on vacation. Like you never, uh, you never so, had a brother that you loved. Like I mean, it's a it's a great movie. <laughs> like don't get me wrong, I love Ghostbusters. Yeah, but I'm also yeah. Like at, to your point, I like the idea like, of these properties being reborn. Like something like this, where you have like a decent comedic director yeah. doing it. You have a yeah. good cast. They're good doing producers. this the right way, if right. anything. Yeah, and really. and didn't they get the participation of like Aykroyd and? Bill Murray, like well, aren't Ackroyd, these guys at least like? I mean, it wouldn't take much to get it. Like Ackroyd's just selling his creepy like crystal skull vodka and stop. You know he's is like an, really soon? he. So he is a crazy. Speaking, this actually is a nice Venn diagram of all of our interests on the show, John. Oh, I can't. Oh. Wait. Dan Aykroyd is crazy into conspiracy theories. Oh, and specifically like believing them or just like oh, talking. Oh yeah, about specifically them. conspiracy theories regarding these crystal skulls. Are you familiar with this one, John? And it has to do with these skulls that supposedly have been found in all these different areas all all throughout the world that when you look at them with modern science, you can't find any etch marks. And so alien conspiracy theorists think that they were like made by alien technology. And it's like part, I think it was part of the, um, he he was playing Legend of Zelda and like kind of just got confused. I think it was actually part of the last Indiana Jones plot. But anyway, if you look it up, Dan Aykroyd (laughs) sells vodka that comes in a, in a crystal skull. I think he makes a pretty penny off of that too. Like, yeah, he does pretty well. Yeah. Oh, and he's he's way in it. Like he is literally that guy from Ghostbusters. No huh. foolsies. Like, I mean, but how to. is the vodka? It's we'll vodka. Say, Who gives a shit? It's it's <laughs> swill. No matter how expensive it's it is. Swill. Ooh, shots fired. It's, yeah, it's really, stuff you drink when you want to be an alcoholic, but you don't <laughs> want to like really taste anything. I don't know. This is you're making strong statements here. Yeah. I'm hey, I, I have wanted to get blackout drunk like everyone else, and in those instances, I went to vodka when I wanted something that tastes good. I had anything else. Huh. Okay. Fact. Very good. Very good. Joe, what's your stance on vodka as our resident? Drink a holiday. I don't. I don't drink a lot of hard liquor, but I do enjoy a um, a white Russian, and you need vodka huh. for that. So. Right, but that has a bunch of other good tasting ingredients in it. It's, Would you? The it? only Crystal point skulls? of the the only no. point of the vodka in that recipe is to get you drunk. <coughs> yeah, I guess so. And then you put delicious stuff into it. it well, I guess looks... if that's the case, then I I enjoyed vodka because I don't like the taste of booze, and vodka you can just mask with anything. So. Mm. Are we sure he's not just making fun of this crystal head thing? Because John, like, or he made this up to sell. Who do you the... trust to have gone deep enough down this rabbit hole to actually understand oh. Dan Aykroyd's motives? Mark, but he's not here. So, <laughs> <laughs> listen, Mark does not have nearly as much time on his hands as I do. So, you should trust me. Uh, all right. So anyway, mm-hmm. Ghostbusters. I, when's that coming out? Is it summer? Summer? Or is it? Soon? Yeah, it's like I think it's like July 18. Does that? I think sound it might right? be Mark's birthday. Didn't he say that? I thought that was the comment. Well, don't ask me when that is. It's in July. <laughs> late, let's say late July. I don't know. What is that? I can't wait till he hears this. It <laughs> he is knows. just like, I fucking hate Eric. I could, <laughs> listen, I could peg it within three to five days. <laughs> I think that's pretty good. Oh, boy. I know my birthday and my wife's birthday. Casey, I want to know if you ever had this Crystal Head vodka. I think Casey, you're, you're on mute, bro. Has he been on mute that whole time? Or he's broken. Is he uh-huh. He, he actually, might be broken. I can. I can case. see him moving. His lips are moving. You may want to reboot or something. Yeah, oh boy. We're down. We're All down right. Anyway, 
So, mm-hmm. Crystal Head, uh, we'll let uh, Casey weigh in when um, he's just Schnars, not. can you give us, enlighten us a little bit about the rest of the upcoming schedules? Ooh, uh, you know what? I can, and I have this open on my computer, and I'm going to keep talking. Yep, found it. Um, so, next week, we have 10 Cloverfield Lane. Mm-hmm. Then we are watching a little film called Ghost Watch. Oh, uh, which is our I hear it's good. Set. Oh, there's Casey. I hear a Casey. Uh, yeah, we got Ghost Watch. Casey. Did you hear me? Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. There He's he is. back. <clears throat> back in action. Uh, yeah, so real quick, Ghost Watch. Then allegedly we're going to get this thing called the Disappointments Room, which I'm sure everyone has a joke about, but we'll keep moving. Amityville, The Awakening, was supposed to be on April 1st. It sounds like that got bumped to I'm literally going to forget about that every week until you bring yeah. it up again. When did it get bumped to? Yeah. January. Like January, didn't it? Oh, that what... wow. Yeah. That's, wow. No no good. Um, there's a movie called Before I Wake, which is currently oh. slated for uh, April 8th, but that sounds like a potential, you know, boot. And then uh, we've got Green Room and Hardcore Henry back to back. Wow. I'm listening. It's mm-hmm. a lot of theater. After that, we go, yeah, it gets pretty light, though, uh, right through uh, May. The only thing we've got in May is this thing called The Darkness, which I, I actually did get a trailer for that, but I'd, I'd seen one the last time. Oh, we is that the-, the Native American? Is that the proper yeah. term? We're oh. going we're going Indian uh, to American Indian. Uh, uh, the Darkness, also a super sweet video game. Mm. Casey, ever play that game? And a mediocre uh, metal, metal band too. <laughs> hard rock band. Thing I love. <laughs> I'm in on the darkness. It's like a first-person have, shooter, and then uh, you get alien that like is an alien that like becomes part of you, and you get then you get these like big tentacle things with jaws that like eat people. That you oh can, yes, you it's based them. off a comic book. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Just still the rhythm of my heart. It's pretty good, Joe. This is your fault. Whatever's about to unfold <laughs> it's all for the next 45 Casey. minutes is your fault. Just take it back. Just take it all back. Hey, Joe, speaking of whatever's about to unfold, uh, what are we drinking tonight while we review the other side of the door? Oh, I got a good one. I got a good one. Um, I, I, I'll be the judge. Well. That, please. <laughs> Continue. Uh, this is why we do the beer first and then the words second. Um <laughs> So the other side of the door is about a fine American couple that ventures over into India, um, falls in love and decides to stay there. Um, And things unfold beyond there, which John, I'm sure, will elaborate beautifully. Mm -hmm. But that's really all you need to know for this beer pick. It's from uh, the good folks at Ballast Point, uh, which is out in San Diego, California. And this is their Indra Kunindindra (laughs) Curry Export Stout. Wow. Which I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that second word right. <laughs> Are I'm you sure that it's not. Indian? Uh, it up. is our Indian style export stout is a unique collaboration with award winning home brewer Alex Tweet. Um, so, yeah, I'm 100% sure it's Indian. Um, so, it's a stout, but they actually put curry, cumin, cayenne pepper, coconut, and kaffir, lime leaf, whatever that is. Um, into it it's it's I don't even know how to describe this like it's one of the weirdest and I don't mean that in a bad way like beers I've ever tasted in my life like sounds delicious it's a stout so it's got like sort of that heaviness to it but the the seasoning and like the flavors in here are like nothing I've ever tasted this one of them expensive beers Joe it seems like it might be expensive it's not super it comes in like the 22 ounce bomber but it it wouldn't it didn't run more than ten bucks if I remember right like it's I, not I really like good beer but I still have that voice in my head where I'm like looking at a twenty two yeah. that's like fourteen dollars and I'm like or I could buy like eighty beers of this kind of beer yeah it's I totally get it like as I get older and have like a child that I have to look at in the face so like, <laughs> right I, right I can't man. I can't spend twenty bucks on Shit's like heavy. A, so what I would do is I would buy like one of the good beer and then just buy a bunch of backup shitty beer so I would have my one beer and enjoy it. And then if I wanted to keep tying one on, I would just go to the cheap beer. That's kind of my Saturday night. Like, I'll buy a six-pack <laughs> and then get, like, one of the 22s. Like, yeah. Well, it's yeah. why I like uh, going to, like, bottle shops because you can kind of go real nice, then, like, step down. You can you can have a progression where you're like, I'm losing yeah. taste around beer Right, because you're not even so. drinking. You're just trying to get drunk at that point. So why not yeah. just cut to the chase? Why not and even, just, like, six packs. Why not just like, drink some vodka? Even, like, six packs. Like, I don't really <laughs> like going outside stuff that I've had before now. Like, yeah. So I usually try yeah. something different in the 22 and then get like a six pack of stuff I know I like. I like a good um, like six pack mix where you yeah. get to pick your own. It's always nice. 
Uh, but anyway, yeah. this beer. So, yeah, I mean, the curry and cumin definitely sort of come through the most. I mean, those are pretty strong flavors. And, you know, when you have them in food, but it's it's a really interesting beer. Like it's you're definitely not going to get a few of these and drink them all night. But I would definitely <laughs> recommend it if you want to try something different. I mean, Ballast Point just puts out awesome beers in general. They're they're yeah. sculpting. Um, I think I did the Habanero one um, on did. a previous episode. And it's just super good. Um, and they have a bunch of other ones that you should definitely try. Comes in at 7% alcohol. So it's it's up there. But this is not one that you're going to chug. So, you know, it's you might have trouble getting some of the fun effects. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alice. I mean, 7% is still uh, meaty. It's pretty good, for, man. Yeah. On average. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> meaty is so, a good word. Uh, ballastpoint.com is their website. I'm not going to spell that. But you can Google and figure it out. And uh, yeah. <laughs> He's burp. <laughs> no, you know what? I've had an awful cough all week, so this oh, is going to be a lot of fun for you guys to listen to. Cool. Nice. nice. All right. Well, thank you for that, Joe. That's the beer recommendation. Thank we you. Get here, we get that here every week on Bloody Good Horror. Now let's take a quick break so that we may discuss the other side of the door. I'm Gotham's reckoning. Here to end the bold time you've all been living on. You are evil. I'm necessary evil. Hi, this is Daniel Robot from everything you've ever seen on television, and you're listening to Bloody Good Heart. This is it, Shatterbird. Your big break in TV. Fuck the front time, bitch. back all right yeah, yeah john <sighs> words words you know what's coming up john uh, a little march madness dude it's it started Ooh. today duke, you're, uh, uh, your duke boys there are they going i assume they well the hcc go, right? tournament is is going on right now we we had a game today uh it was we? lovely you're yeah one of those? yeah the okay. team and i cool how'd you game. do bro you're like that chick i used to work with that went to penn state <laughs> She was really yeah. level-headed. Let me tell you about her. <laughs> Definitely oh, didn't you know seem like she was an occult at all. You Let's... know what I found out this week, Eric? Our uh, our former principal at Burnt Hills uh, I saw High that. passed she, away. She passed away. But did you read the obituary? She was a Duke alumni. Oh, what? yeah. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. She that's really slid nice. down the rung there to end up where she ended up. Ah, oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> she was very. They didn't list her in any alumni. I'm materials. just saying what Schnars was thinking. So you know. oh. <laughs> they didn't list her in any alumni. That's messed up. <laughs> she was that's messed was up. Man. What I said she was, was just such a, a nice lady. I just yeah. made it a little funny. I was listen. Gross. If she had Joan Charney's respect, then yeah. I, that's if all. She could. <laughs> Whoa. Who's hitting buttons? What the hell? Son is that? of a bitch. Uh, unclear what that was. That uh, might have been me. A- anyway, um, what I was going to say was that she could be really nice because she had a vice principal who was oh the biggest a hole on planet Earth. Yeah. Who did all the, the dirty work. And also owned a liquor store. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. What? That liquor nice. store that used to be next to Mr. Video on Route 50. Is you guys all know where that stop? is, right? Just. <laughs> That place is oh, great, though. God. Yeah. Get the great Nintendo selection. Anyway, uh, John, you went to Duke. Is the moral of that whole conversation. They yes. taught you words. You bring us one of those words every week here on the show. So let's do just that. <laughs> kind of lost steam with the intro a little bit there. <laughs> I was wondering where you're going. Wow. Uh, Once John insulted our dead principal. <laughs> 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 took a real turn <laughs> i'm pretty sure eric was the one who insulted her <laughs> i don't know i would i may have been talking but i hear you say good riddance i made it i made a statement of fact you took it a step further yeah. That's... <laughs> oh christ <laughs> all right today's word is and i'm not 100 sure 100 sure how to pronounce it boot that's b-h-o-o-t Mm-hmm. Uh, alternatively spelled B-H-U-T, Bahooty. is a supernatural creature, usually the ghost of a deceased person in the popular culture, literature, and some ancient texts of the Indian subcontinent. Mm. Wow, John. Boom. <laughs> I Boom. <got> nothing. <laughs> did your, yep. did your uh, friend from Duke give you that one too before the show? <laughs> Seriously, where did you pull that out of? 
You know, words sometimes they just come to me, guys. Did you Google Indian spooky? <laughs> I, 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 I Googled Indian ghost and it came up. <laughs> I was so pumped. Um, interpretations of how boots come into existence vary by region and community, but they are usually considered to be perturbed and restless due to some factor that presents them from moving on. Huh. Yada, yada, yada. Violent death, unsettled matters in their lives ghost things you so. can't even read the the full definition without just half-assing it <laughs> what do you th- i mean that, that was the full definition listen i can even give you the etymology i would uh, love it if you did that it, it they say on wikipedia that uh it comes from sanskrit uh buddha which uh that carries the connotations of past and being so it's uh you know it's it's come down to us from the old sanskrit mm-hmm. oh as you do sanskrit you language in a th- you major in a dead language <laughs> get out of my room uh, that's a little little pcu for the people the people at home uh john why don't you tell us what the other side of the door is about who's in it who made it what's it about oh god <clears throat> i did approximately no research uh mm-hmm. before we jumped online here um the movie is directed by a gentleman named Yo- johans roberts um he has no other credits that I am familiar with, but he has done some other horror stuff. He's got something called Storage 24. Um, he's got something called The Expelled or F. Right. And then something called Hell Breeder. Breeder, as in like breeder of animals. It breeds uh, hell. Yeah. So it's a good time. He he. But he's he's here. He's talking about uh ghosts and doors and and such um it stars jeremy sisto um who casey has informed us is hunk dad the every dad dad hunk uh, yeah um hey you need a white dad call jeremy sisto is casey back on mute he's doing both of those things right now i think i he think he's a... having trouble oh damn it casey um sarah wayne callies is that do we think that's how you say her name uh walking yeah. dead lady yeah. yeah, Walking Dead Lady, a.k.a. Walking Dead Lady. I mean, she was only on, what, the first two first seasons? First two seasons, yep. Wow, yeah. spoiler alert, John. All right, sorry. Uh, then she dies L- by zombie. Lori Grimes, yeah, yeah, shocker. Someone in Walking Dead dies. And also, her death gives birth, gave birth, literally, let's say, to the greatest uh, meme in internet history, which is uh, Rick Coral. yelling at Coral. Oh, my God. It's... I <laughs> will never grow tired of those. I My last office, I used to just print them out and put them all over the walls. Can so you guys hear me now? Oh, oh, yeah. here you. Again. You're Coral. back. So I took my wife to the doctor last week, and we were in the waiting room, and there was a little girl that came out and called her, and her name was Coral. And I, tur- I had the uh, Andy from uh, Parks and Rec look on my face when they said that. I turned to my wife like, oh, Coral. <laughs> She's so, back. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, Sarah Wayne Cayley's, uh, she's here. She's playing the mother, Maria. So you've got Maria and Michael. That's This is a couple. And then they have a daughter, Lucy. Um, and there's really one other character. Her name's Peaky. Uh, she is the um, sort of the housekeeper slash nanny for the family. You might say the magical housekeeper slash nanny. Mm-hmm. You, you could. It's also, so I'm looking at the IMDb page and like we can, we'll get into this obviously, but there are only seven people listed on the like sort of cast page. Hmm. And this is a movie set in India. We probably should have started there. A set of extras. Yeah, set in, in Mumbai. And Mumbai. Peaky is the only Indian actress Yikes. listed on, credited on the cast page. So that's weird because there were like a bunch of others. There was a lot. Uh, yeah. So you've got this family, Maria, Michael, Lucy, and then their housekeeper. And what, you know, the, the basic, the backdrop of the story is that the family has recently, somewhat recently, like over the last year, lost their son. So they used to have a son. His name was Oliver. So they had these two kids. And the mom, as the movie opens, is like really, really struggling with the grief that she has about the loss of her son. Um, She's struggling to the point that she attempts to she attempts suicide. Um, so, you know, takes a bunch of pills. It's sort of unclear if she was like trying to kill herself or just. I mean, it's a suicide attempt, I guess. So we shouldn't put too fine a point on it. But um, she's in the hospital, and the 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 housekeeper Peaky comes to her and is like, "Listen, um, I can help you connect with your dead son one more time." And there's like these very specific instructions that you have to follow. To it's do also that. the first sign of anything like, uh, like supernatural in the whole movie. So 
the, at that scene, you're just like, oh, it's going to be one of those movies. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's, I mean, it's funny because there's a lot of setup to the family's life and backdrop. I mean, like sure. that scene when she's in the hospital and Peggy comes to her is probably like 20 minutes in. Um, and it immediately, so then immediately she goes to this temple in this far off village that's in, it's right outside that this, this village is where Peaky grew up and there's a forest. And then in the forest, there's a temple. This temple is where the, the like spirit world and the human world meet or it's like right near there. And so there's this whole ritual where you go inside and you, you sort of like wait there. And that night, if you have to like spread the ashes of your lost relative and they will come and visit you at this temple, but they'll only visit you outside the door and you can't open the door to find out what's on the other side. Do you see where I went with that? Uh-huh. Um, of the door, the other side. Yeah, right. yeah no, exactly. Because <laughs> when you open the door, there's it's you, there's another side. Um, uh-huh. Sure, yeah. It's Yeah, no, and you just can't go there. So she does, though, uh, and just... bad things. It takes like five happening. minutes. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, you know, it is, it's one of those things where when it happens – so Peaky tells her to go there, and she's like, no matter what happens, you can't open the door. But doesn't tell her why, which always gets yeah. me in these movies. Yeah. Like, maybe give her a little bit of context, not just and like, she also, don't like, do it. There's not, like, that strong a warning. She no, should have been like, like, listen, your son's going to come, and then he's going to freak out and ask you to open the door, and you can't open it. Like, bring some water, be there. pack oh, some carnival shoes, don't open sure. the door, maybe bring some <laughs> granola for the trip back, don't yeah. open the door, what else? Um... <laughs> So she opens the door. Uh, ghost things begin to transpire, um, and and we kind of get into I mean what I would call like pretty by the numbers possession movie um, or haunting really, and then possession. Yeah, I mean, the possession doesn't really happen until like towards the end. Sure, yeah, you're right. It, yeah, mm. haunting movie. It, but like the spirit is back with them. It's very yeah. much like Insidious, right? Like the very Insidious conjuring esque. Yeah, the Insidious yeah. ghost is living around them. Sort of like has all these random powers that it can jump into people, or yeah. it can move things around, or it can make you see shit. And, and basically, what, what we find out is that the spirit that the the boys starts to haunt them because he's mm-hmm. out now and like pet cemetery sort of he's like not really himself. He's getting kind of ominous. No, and he's a ghost. Like, there's also like some type of I don't know if it's supposed to be a god or a demon or like some type of like uh like gatekeeper to purgatory basically that is now trying to get him back because yeah. he is escaped yeah. and, and yeah. thrown the balance off or whatever. Mirtu is I believe who you are referring to. Oh, sure. Mirtu? That was my yeah, favorite too, show yes. on, a, like on animal. Uh Mirtu J- Kingdom. Joe. Yes. What'd you think of this movie? Um, I was not a giant fan. Um, I do think there's some interesting parts. I mean, we talked about it over email. Like the setting, I think, is really interesting. Um, you know, it has, especially when she like gets to the temple. I, I think the visuals are really cool. Um, you know, I did find it kind of interesting that when this kid starts sort of, you know, haunting them, the mother is kind of like trying to hide it, but also is almost like bringing the kid back in the family like they show her like reading stories to him She's at like night not like, super bummed that yeah the go- ghost is back yeah yeah but there were i mean i i talked about it like i am not a huge fan of her as an actress um i wasn't i didn't you know she doesn't have much presence for me she's a little flat yeah yeah like i didn't think she was that great on walking dead and this you know i think the thing that stuck out to me was and i was kind of joking about it but you know i think it's kind of true is at no point does she involve the husband in any of this. Um, yeah. Like they, she they make working it... out some deep seated issues. Well, well, she, she, <laughs> I mean, she I just to like hide it from the husband. I she... know, but also, well, okay, he so he rightly thinks she's crazy. So yeah. she obviously is well, more broken really, up than the husband because she was actually. I don't think John, you talked about it. Yeah, like I didn't... She was involved in the yeah. crash. Like there's a scene where their car goes over this bridge and it's sinking and the mother cannot get the son out and has to take the daughter and like leave. She the straight son. up made a choice that saved yeah. one child and killed the other one. Well, so it was that's unclear, where all the guilt comes from. It was unclear if she was going to be able to save the son, whereas like the daughter, she could really easily save. That's how yeah. I interpreted that. He was stuck and like they yeah. tried like, but 
I mean, I did think it was interesting. It's like at no point does she talk to the husband about like, hey, I want to do this. Like, you know, maybe you'd like to come talk to our dead son. Like, <laughs> no, <laughs> well, just, I mean, to a yeah. chance would be like, like ah, nah. Uh, to be fair, good. though, like because of her suicide attempt, like the husband is like really worried about I her. I already think she's so a she, little. So she knows off. that she yeah, can't. No. I mean. You're 100 yeah. percent right, but it's still like it felt weird to me when she's like, so she has to like burn the you know the corpse of the kid, and it's like, dear God, like yeah, your husband's the like in the other up, world, like, the digging up of his well, body was extreme, and the fact that she had his stuffed tiger that she pulled out of the coffin that she had in the house, it's yeah. like, he's gonna find it at some point, it was, and then yeah. she looked at the body. <laughs> well, too. I thought the ghost brought the tiger back. The ghost brought the no. tiger back. I no, thought it was he brought the, it out when they burned him. It, it, she it was brought in the casket. Out. No, yeah. she pulled it out of the casket, but she didn't bring it back with her because, yeah, I guess. because yeah, then she's right. like, how did you get that? She's like freaking out that it's right, there. Right. Yeah. But I, I mean, the, the whole thing, like you, you kind of said, John, it's like pretty by the numbers after that. I mean, I thought there was some interesting stuff, but like overall, like it just, it was, it was a little bland for me. Casey. Um, yeah. I think Joe had all the good notes on that one. This is a bland, very bland movie, and it's disappointing. I knew absolutely nothing about it going in, except for Jeremy Sisto was in it, and I didn't know it until you mentioned it last week, Eric, on the episode that we were on. Um, So I didn't know what I was getting into. I thought the setting was cool. I thought they had a hell of a lot of potential to do a lot with the Indian setting and all the mythos and stuff like that. But then they introduced all this stuff and then they did absolutely nothing with it. So you have just a bog standard ghost possession story. Nothing new at all. Yep. Gone. Sorry. <laughs> what? I, I was like, I was where did mute. Eric go? I was on mute. Is someone hosting this show? Um, yeah. I mean, I so... The most interesting part about this movie is that it's set in India. Um, I like I, I actually meant to read some of the reviews because I was really curious. I think we got some tweets. Um, I haven't gone through all the SBGH yet, but it'll be I'm curious to see like I'm I, I like don't know whether to think this movie was like sort of overtly racist or just kind of like oh an um, an American Hollywood movie that was set in India. So and, and I say that because, like, I, I mentioned that the cast, at least on the IMDb page, is, is just, like, all of the white people and then the the um, the nanny slash maid. But, like, it's, it's a movie about an American family who's, like, expats living in India. So, I, like, I don't know if they – to me, it was not, like, offensive the way that they handled India. But there is a little, like, Orientalism going on. Like, it kind of, like, they're – they're living this this kind of like half life in India. Um, the husband's even like an antique dealer, so that's like kind of his thing. Is like he has to go find like Indian artifacts that, and their house is very much representative of that. Um, I, so I kind of agree with Casey. I thought it was at least an interesting choice. It means that like the ghost and like the the mythos is at least like slightly different than the other it's ghost something and else. That we get. Yeah, yeah, but. Ultimately, it's the exact same thing. You know, like, you could replace the the caretaker thing with whatever the, or the, you know, the the guard to the underworld with the ghost from Paranormal Activity movies and, like, Toby and, like, it's basically... I mean, I wonder if, like, this was even made thinking, like, oh, this will get into theaters, or if they made it and somebody went, hey, people like these movies, why don't we put it out in the theaters? Because it was a limited release anyway. It was pretty limited. I mean, this was a, it's a 20th Century Fox movie. Like, it's, my guess is this got greenlit because they figured that they can try to sell it in the U.S. and it'll have like pretty strong play overseas. Like it's set in India. Like I don't know if Indian people will want to see this, but they could at least try. You know, um, I'd be very curious like how this does in India because it really is. They they at least like do take in a lot of the scene. Or they they like set a lot of the scene. They spend a lot of energy, kind of like giving you some of the flavor of it, but. It's, well, and I don't. So I mean, white, part of the know? part of the problem is that I none of us have the context to like really, really give that stuff any justice. I mean, I think it is fair to say like the Indian culture is one with a very rich like spiritual kind of um, history. You know what I mean? To pull from. Um, yeah, I do whether think or not this is like accurate to any actual. Mythology, well, that's I don't know. I can't. Yeah, I like, can't say that. That's my knows? point. Yeah, and it is like the idea that like the one main Indian character is the person that introduces 
this mystical thing. You know what I mean? Well, and all the other Indian characters that get um, lines are like either kind of like vaguely threatening or like just like they have like there's the moment in the very beginning where they're like walking on the beach and they like start talking to a little girl and then she just like turns into a demon. <laughs> like, yeah. What in the fuck? Yeah. So it is. Um, it's it is very isolated from like they are kind of in this house and you never really see them like other than the husband in a couple scenes. Like you never really see them out. Like yeah. sort of interacting with people, which is kind of weird. Well, that's a nice cheap way to make a movie. Yeah. So. Um, I'm I'm like kind of of two minds on this movie because like when I watched it, I actually enjoyed it a lot. Um, I mean, okay, maybe not a lot. I enjoyed it. You were on I the was, edge of your I seat. Was pretty Did engaged. you clap at the end? <laughs> I was pretty engaged throughout. And something like, I don't know if we really talked about, but like the house in this movie is so freaking cool. Yeah. It's basically a big like square with the, the center part is open to the elements. So like there's furniture and a floor, and but there's like also like trees tree going, going up out of the floor. ground. And then there's kind of two levels that ring around it that have doors that open to go into rooms that are actually like closed off. And that is so cool because it leads to things like it raining inside of the house yeah. or them walking around at night and being able to like hear things outside really clearly. It's a really, really neat um, aspect to the film. And I think like having it be this family, this, this American family that's settled in India is just such a different thing. Mm-hmm. Um, that as so those kind of unique elements like really kind of kept me in it i also think the monster design is really great on the kind of spooky ghost thing it's very very j horror um it yeah. feels that way they inspired by that kind of stuff but then you, i really could, did could like you say i horror maybe mm. sure i don't know but i really did like at the end of the day I have to sit back and go after i left the theater kind of go what's different about this from the movies that make me really angry and there wasn't a lot. I will say at least it was trying to do something else. The other thing that makes this movie unique is it is like emotionally brutalizing. Oh, boy. It oh boy. is all the stuff. Yeah, I did not get that. All the like, stuff with oh. the kid and like showing you the scene where the kid dies yeah. and how like sad their family is. is fucking it's brutal. Well, and-, it's, and it's just way far beyond to me what you normally get in movies like this. It's normally a lot more surface with this kind of stuff, mm. but it was too much for me. At some point I just was yeah. thinking I can't. It's weird. Like it's, and, and it may be, and I'm not even saying this joking. Like it may be just because I do not find uh, what's her name to be a good actress. Like the, I just, I didn't care. The like, fact that they showed us that entire scene in real it time be, as yeah. it I'm played out. Huge asshole. The well, fact that they showed us that I'm entire not insulting scene. dead principles, aren't you? <laughs> the entire scene of the kids dying they made us watch in real time yeah. and see that that particular thing was like a really conscious decision on their yeah. part. I we very are going to make you watch this whole thing. I, I, I almost feel here. like I would have needed like maybe a couple minutes before the actual crash because they, they jump right into when the car is sinking. Like, I don't know, like to me, you didn't meet Oliver before he was trapped you know, I guess you saw him like playing the piano and stuff. Like I don't know. Like maybe I think I just needed more. Like I hmm. never really felt connected to them. It wasn't about the kids to me. It was just about I don't know. It was just I don't know. No, I'm with really you, Eric. Like I intense, actually, man. I thought it was very emotionally stressful. Um, I mean, it's it's yeah. She's like it's forced brutal to brutal because to, like, it happens so kids. slow that yeah. the kids are they're all talking to each other as the car is underwater and starting to fill up with water but mm. they're having these conversations the way that a parent just would with a kid who doesn't fully like process what's going i don't know it's really hard to explain like the kid hurt his leg or something he's like my leg hurts and she's like i'm fine i know your leg hurts shut up i'm now con- concerned about joe being uh, killer again. joe's usually <laughs> such the like sensitive parent i know and that's like as you guys talk about it like i I'm concerned too, Josh. <laughs> so, uh, you know what? This movie has some unique things about it, and I think that that gives it some merit. I do think at the end of the day, it basically follows all of those beats, but at least it's in a kind of refreshing setting with some different things happening. If, if this was set in, like, New England or the Midwest, like, we would be talking about it as one of the most egregious, you know. Sure. Yeah. Like, why am I here watching this? And, yeah. yeah. Um, the I thing think I will Sisto say helps it too. The I will say the thing I thought was maybe the closest to being overtly racist was the sort of like woods tribe people that 
they, they're very not explained. She basically, I think the Pika, the... the they um, seem to be able to walk around in normal society without being noticed. Yeah. No one's paying attention. And it's also, but like, she's kind of like, yeah, just heads up. There's some other people that live in the woods <laughs> too. And like, sometimes they're around and like, they can talk to oh, the ghosts. They whatever. like to eat the flesh of dead people as they're digging oh, up her yeah, son. Yeah, and she's just kind of... Uh, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, this is gonna happen. I, I forgot I to I feel to that um, Kiki, Kiki is that her name? Pika. I feel Kiki. that Pika left out a lot of Wasn't key parts Pika? of information about this whole plot. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Um, well, yeah, she kind of explained it as they went along. Oh, I didn't. I didn't tell you that we have to dig up your dead kid now. <laughs> She's like, what? When what? we didn't. When we started that. I and didn't... like, you know, that to me was the whole most jumping the sharky moment. You know, she she leaves the house, doesn't tell the husband where she's going. She leaves a note. She gets on one of those, I'm sorry, sketchy Indian trains and, and goes off just into the wild countryside by herself. She's out in like the jungle, literally by herself, and just wanders off into the woods, which aren't there tigers? No map. No map. Yeah, no map. Aren't there tigers oh, yeah. and shit that'll kill you out there? Sure. You know, God, no weapon, yeah. no flashlight. And she goes to this like a very intensely creepy temple and just walks in. She's just hanging out there. It's pitch black. It's nighttime, Dude, you know. Grief is a fucked up thing. That's true. It's I mean, it's funny because, like, I it, to a certain point, and, and we were talking about how, like, sort of emotionally uh, rigorous the movie is in the beginning. Like, I kind of wanted this movie to be a little smarter. Like, I wish it was just a little bit smarter about the, the sort of, like, grief component. And and Joe sort of mentioned this it, a little. Well, it, it was in. trying, right? I mean, it was trying to go out of its way to hammer it home, whether or not it, it accomplished that. No, sure. I guess that's... I guess, yeah, um, we're kind of saying the same thing in two different ways. But Joe sort of mentioned it at the top, which is, like, the, the, you don't get into the fact that, like, the dad and the daughter are probably trying to deal with this, too. And, like, yeah. there's no, like... Con- like and part of it, I read the- it as the dad really. The dad's just trying to keep his shit together because yeah. he's trying to keep the family together, and I, yeah. and, and that happens. You know, the wife is really kind of losing it and can't handle her shit. So he's and I th- he seems like a kind of dude who's just very avoidant anyway because he definitely doesn't ever want to talk about it. No, I I think that's true. I, I think that was a bad choice though. Like they under you. Yeah. I mean, in my mind, Jeremy Sisto like had a lot more because to give to this movie. Because you see that moment he where he comes delivers. home. Like he comes home before he discovers she's tried to kill herself and he sees that she's watching the home movies and he totally kind of loses yeah, it. Yeah, he, for a he cries. Yeah. A I think bit, it's yeah. his character. I think his character is a very buttoned up person who like is trying not to show his emotions. Yeah. Um, and then he immediately find and then he finds out that she tried to kill herself. And... Yeah, it was tough. There was a lot of. But I just, that aspect to me was. I appreciate that they were trying to develop the characters a little better, but it was too much for me at some point. I'm like, like, listen, man, I just wanted a a fun horror movie on a Sunday afternoon. This one's like a little real for me. Yeah. Mm. Um, So. Would you live in India, John? You know, no, I definitely wouldn't live there. I had a chance to go for work and I ended up taking a pass on it because there was like other shit that was going on. But uh, I do really want to go. Seems like Like, it'd be a cool place to visit. Yeah, I have a couple buddies, uh, from a couple of buddies that uh, one, my one buddy he, he keeps telling me he's going to get married in India and like that, you know, then I'll get to go. And I'm like, let's wait Indian? till you have a girlfriend. Yeah, he's Indian. Oh, and I was, oh. Why? Well, that seems like a weird destination choice. <laughs> no, no, yeah, he, he's like It's pretty like that excited. episode of Seinfeld. So I'm actually, I have an Indian wedding this summer for a different guy, but it's in San Francisco, but he's Indian doing like kind summer. of a traditional thing. Right. So the India of America, they call it. Um, Casey, your mic working back there? We have Casey on visual. Yeah, I but, can see uh, him. Okay. Can you write it down on paper backwards and then hold it up to your your weapon? You had thoughts about Jeremy Sisto that I was curious yeah. to hear. Um, was there anything else you guys love... wanted to discuss about this movie? Where we got I, I do think it's nice time. to have like an audience, like Casey's kind of like the studio audience, where <laughs> you just like see when we're being funny. Yes, <laughs> like, yeah. Just appreciate it. Um, um, I will say I I agree with John that those tribes people were probably not the most accurate, but I did find them to be probably one of the creepier things of the movie. Like, oh, like Dude, I, I think scene, where the the scene where they're like at the water dumping the birds into the water, like giving them yeah. the sort of traditional Indian burial, and the daughter's like, 
mommy there's a man and she, the mom turns and like sees the dude in the distance pointing at her and then she's like not that man the uh, she turns around and she's like fucking right up in her grill yeah, the guy in your theater laugh oh. when that happened oh hysterical laughter <laughs> hysterical yeah i wish you had recorded this guy uh it was unbelievable you recorded no so <laughs> that was the thing so uh, this movie did definitely go to a pretty bagooly place mm. like there was probably three or four aggressive jump scares but it ultimately didn't it wasn't that jump scary no, at no, the end say the same thing like I mean, a lot of the – we kind of talked about it. A lot of the quote-unquote haunting takes place with the mother, you know, almost treating the ghost like a son again. Like there yeah. isn't a ton of like spooky ghost stuff that goes on. Well, she's super happy to have him back. Like she's not yeah. super happy. She's kind of like, oh, this is weird, but I'm going <laughs> to go with it, you know. And I do like the scene where uh, Peaky – like I forget what actually happens, but it's the first time that she <laughs> – Or no, it was – I it think it's peaky. peaky. Yeah, yeah, it's peaky. Um, she, you're just, you're used to like me <laughs> I'll never, just lose ever. My mind now. Um, she, I forgot what happens, but like Peaky for the first time kind of knows like, uh oh, something's going on here. And she just looks at the mother like, I fucking know what you did. You touched that goddamn door, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She gives, <laughs> gives it, her the she stank gives her face. Real judgy look. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I mean, she, she could, I feel like that was the other thing is, Peaky could have done a little more probably at a certain point, you know, like, yeah, like no, really. At don't some point, she door. just seems she has this kind of look and she's carrying herself as if to say, I'm afraid I'm going to get in trouble for telling this white lady about this place. Mm. You know, like she's like she seems very guilty, but not really because of what's happening to the family more like, oh, damn it. I knew I shouldn't have told you. And it's like, really, you really didn't resist telling her at all. <laughs> you kind of just came right out with it's it. Like, eh, I mean, she had go. tried to kill herself at that point, but still. Yeah. Do you think it would have been funny? I think I made this joke over email, but it, when she showed up to the temple, there was somebody else inside trying to like conjure <laughs> up their other loved ones. She had to wait yeah. in line. Like if there was like a line, like you're just like hanging out there, like oh. Well. Yeah. Uh, do we want to talk about the final final ending? That before yes, but before let's. I what do you think, John? I this movie kind of reminded me of Serpent of the Rainbow a little bit. Huh. Um, I not as good clearly, but sort of the um, I don't know in the way that it's all about this like foreign mysticism, and you're in this like jungle place, and yeah, I mean um, it, it like. Well, Serpent in the Rainbow is like uh, is actually I think it's like more specifically about that. Like I think what I liked about these characters though is that they don't run around the whole movie acting as a cipher for the audience pointing out how weird everything is oh we're in india it's weird no it's actually kind of cool that they're just this family and they just settle there and it's like everyday life you know they yeah. go to this yeah. cafe all the time and they their kids are growing up there and love it and that was sure. like an interesting aspect we find the me. most secluded backwoods house to make sure that we never see one <laughs> indian person while we're here <laughs> no but but to your point like that's except like except for the hired the, help serpent yeah. in the rainbow that like, cab driver was there joe Oh, yeah. That one is time. It so so much of Serpent in the Rainbow is about the like sort of confusion or disorientation sure. of being in this that. like really weird place. Yeah. And this they're not disoriented. I mean, to your point, like they are very much assimilated at least into the sort of like day to day life. So, um, yeah, I want that house. It is a sweet sweet house. It's a nice house. Um, Although they left the like, so you got the big open part, and then the doors to the rooms. They left those doors open a lot. I would think you'd want to keep those doors closed all the time because of birds. bugs and birds and, and yeah. all that crap. I don't know. Everything was point, dusty in the center yeah. part, you know? Aren't, just, aren't you just kind of like, fuck it, whatever. I've, India seems like a place with some scary bugs, John. I'm just going to mm. Yeah, say. No, that's fair. I learned that from the Temple of Doom. Yeah, yes. Thank you, we Joe. All did. Thank you. Um, yeah. Well, do we'll we want to lay down? bring us home? I guess. Yeah, uh, let me let's lay down a big spoiler alert. If if you are at all considering seeing this movie, like don't go. Essentially, I just want to ask you guys about the very very final um, twist ending, which so the movie ends with the mo- so the the daughter becomes possessed by the son's ghost, um, and then the the creepy uh, woodland or you know jungle tribe shows up and basically is like going to kill the daughter to kill the kill the ghost and the mom like kind of grabs her and tells the son to like jump into her body instead and so the son does that and then the the tribes people kill her 
which now she's dead, but the ghost, it, like, it saves the rest of the family. It's like an from... exorcist kind of a thing. Well, she's he... like, take me. Yeah, true. Wow. I guess you're right. It, it's like the actual end of the exorcist. That scene now you say where, that. um, the scene where the boy, spoiler alert, did we give that? The, yeah, yeah. The scene oh, where the boy, uh, has possessed the girl and it's Jeremy like Sisto is yeah messing with the mom first of all but then Sisto is, is just thinking all right you're crazy I need to protect my daughter from you pulls her away and then the daughter immediately turns evil and just stabs him in the stomach that scene is brutal yeah. that's yeah. crazy that scene yeah he's just like oh I've made a huge mistake yeah I mean it, it turns really quick like I almost would have wanted that like they took so long to get to that part of the movie that like you could have played around with that a little bit more yeah. and may, whatever that's at that point it's you know it is what it is i hate that stuff though i hate i don't know that no of well stuff. it's brutal it's right i mean that's why it works but um but i mean no, the so, type of setup where like oh the kids the mom knows but sisto doesn't believe her because it's like child's play that movie is one out like one whole movie's worth of just the kid knows the doll but the parents don't so they're just like calling him an idiot it's I can't watch movies stuff like that. Ooh. It's a very specific plot. <laughs> I was gonna say, that. but that's I mean that's because like... I know as the audience. So and yeah. I know the good stuff doesn't happen until everybody knows the doll's alive. So just get to the part where the doll's alive. All right, all right, get your we, shit together. We're like we're off on the we're off on <laughs> a deep play. tangent here, but um, sucks. no. So the <laughs> final scene in the movie, and I actually am gonna go on record and say I thought this was kind of clever. Is like after the mom dies, fade to black, and then it fades up, and she is now laying on the steps of that temple, and she's waking up, and she's hearing the husband's voice. He's now on the other side of the door. Oh, uh, uh. And now she's the ghost. Yeah, and she's the ghost. I, I, I was like the way like, they oh. shot that scene. It looked cool. Yeah, yeah, it, it did. And uh, I just thought it was like a somewhat clever way to bring this thing to I you. I mean, the the yeah. abandoned temple itself out in the woods is yeah. kind of an amazing piece of scenery. It's incredibly creepy. Especially the, I mean, when they go through the other side of the door specifically, I loved that. Like there's all these like sort of weird like white dead trees that are just there. And mm-hmm. there's a statue of what becomes Pretty sure that was our, an Instagram filter. They just that, there. There's there. a statue of what becomes our creepy demon in the basement that she kind of. Yeah looks yeah. at no i mean i think and you said it before eric like i think the setting of this movie is what saves it from being just completely awful oh yeah mm. oh yeah all right move on uh anything so. else that's all i got has casey been resurrected from the other side i don't think so of the door i should actually uh-huh. just hang up on him here because it doesn't look like it's working <clears throat> um would you recommend this joe I would watch it on cable when it comes out. Shanners. Yeah, I was going to say Sunday afternoon, FX, you're like hungover, and this comes on, boom. Was this rated R? What was this rated Yeah, it was rated R. Huh. Which I guess was. It, it was like for like mild bloody violence or something. Uh. I mean, realistically, I think it's rated R for the scene when they're in the car. For explicit yeah. sundress butt. <laughs> There's a lot of that in this movie. Oh, the mom's sundress butt? Yeah. I remember that. Uh, I, Come I, on, it was, shut up, it was a little lost that. on me too, Get but now I wish I knew more about it. Sure. We uh, apparently we're not watching the same movie. <laughs> All right, guys, I agree with these two. It's a good cable watch. It's not the worst. It's it's if you I mean if you like supernatural stuff, it's a nice little twist on that stuff. So worth checking out in that yeah. circumstance. But it is what it is. There you go. All right, guys, let's take a quick break and do some fan mail. Mm. What's behind the legend? Listen, he's under the bed! And most terrifying of all... Come with me. What's behind the mirror? He's here. Candyman, you don't have to believe. Just beware. I have no sound. Can you hear me? This is Jeremy Gardner. I'm the writer, director, star of The Battery, and you're listening to Bloody Good Horror. Hmm. 
send your emails to info at bloodygoodhorror.com or hit us up on Twitter at BG Horror with the hashtag AskBGH. And don't forget to pick up back episodes of the show at podcast.bloodygoodhorror.com. And we are back. <laughs> back to do some fan mail. Looks like we picked up Casey along the way. Oh my god! I just wanted to say that <laughs> you sound Jeremy great now. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's all is. I wanted to say this whole episode. He's looking a little uh, dreamy. He's looking a little. I don't know what the word is. Puffy. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Like I'd bloated, agree. Bloated, maybe. My uh, my wife was out in L.A. like maybe six months ago, and actually saw him at the airport, completely baffled by those like check-in tellers where you just you do your own um while gonna fly like just That's like great. looking at it like zoolander trying to get <laughs> files out of the computer <laughs> the library is so tiny uh. but like at some point it's funny he kind of just became the dad like every dad you look at him you're like yes. oh that guy has at least three kids look at him look at his, yeah. gla- look at his glasses info at bloodygoodhorror.com is the email address first up jason on our second date, I took the woman I went on to marry to see the original Let the Right One In. Huh. I convinced her to see it by saying it was like Twilight, but a little more mature. P.S. RSS forever. So if anyone's keeping track of all the people that use RSS, there's no yeah. Way. All right, that's I think number three. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's like at least seven, John. Okay. Um, that you know what though, like Let the Right One In is actually like a great date movie. It's like kind of a romance. It depends on who the story. Is. I mean, I guess oh, it's yeah. a good litmus test. In general, but I'm just saying, I'm you want to keep me till I'm old and decrepit. Yeah, uh, next up, Danielle. Hi, guys, just became a member through Patreon a couple weeks ago. Thank you, Danielle. I'm looking forward to all the past episodes, but I've been seeking out specific ones first. One of those was the Insidious episode I just listened and did not disappoint. I don't know if you all still feel the same about it, but Insidious really got me back into horror. I still think it is one of the greatest horror films of the past 10 years, if not the best. Everything about it is great, and even though I've watched it at least 20 times, it still gives me chills. The highest praise I've heard in my circle of friends was, meh, it was okay. So disappointing. Thank you for being the friends I wish I actually had. (laughs) P.S. Here, listen. She had me until this last line here. P.S. Unfriended sucked super hard. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) whatever, man. Shots fired. Nah, that's cool. I, I feel like this show, and I feel this way about the podcast that I listen to, for a lot of people is like the friends you wish you had oh. who you could actually talk about cool things with you know what i mean i very much feel that way with like the video game podcast i listen to as well so that's cool thank you thank Eric. you for that yeah i don't, I don't know <laughs> what, what, what was i listen to a lot of disney world podcasts and i don't want to be friends with any of those guys <laughs> well that's that's there's more going on there joe uh next up marina she says, hey, guys, been listening to your vintage episodes. Just finished 200, a.k.a. Joe gets hammered. And it would appear you've never done a show featuring an American werewolf in London. Surely I'm wrong. If not, would you please consider it for an upcoming episode? It has a special place in my heart because it's the very first movie I went to see at a movie theater. I was seven and my dad took me. I know that's young, but back huh. in 1982, second graders were hardcore. I think Casey can confirm. <laughs> You betcha. I really love That's the show awesome. and look forward to each new episode. Thanks for helping me get through my work days, Marina. P.S. Please pinch Mark's cheeks for me. He is so cute. He is cute. Mm. <laughs> that is true. Um, no, cheeks? that's an awesome movie. Talk about great first yeah. theater going yeah, yeah. experiences. Um, that is indeed pretty hardcore. We don't often do movies like that. Every once in a while, we'll put a bunch of like old things up for vote for the fans. And sometimes you'll see that stuff crop up when we do staff picks, but I think generally we like to focus on newer stuff. There's plenty of podcasts out there that review just like, hey, we're going to review The Evil Dead. Yeah. yeah. I feel I like and the Evil Dead. you've talked about it before, Eric. Like when we do movies like that, it just ends up us talking about, you remember this Unless scene? Unless a lot cool. of us haven't seen it before, then yeah. a lot of times it there's not a lot to talk about. Cause you well, just, in, back in the day we did used to use a lot of classics or like cult stuff as filler Filler, so like there was a run there where we did like (coughs) chud and like basket case we did prince of darkness that was a really good episode yeah i highly recommend that one so we've covered a lot no but yeah we definitely have not done that one yeah Mm. all right that's it for fan mail info at bloodygoodhorror.com john what do we got on twitter tonight 
Ooh. Oh boy, we got we got some tweets. We got some tweets. Um, I'm gonna start with a with a throwback. This one I came in the day after the last episode. Um, it comes to us from Spook It Podcast. That's at Spook It Podcast. Um, says uh, uh, it is Mark's life goal to sound like John Mulaney because he's <laughs> winning. If it is, he would love that. He loves that dude. <laughs> yeah. No idea who John. He Mulaney does is. sound like him too. Now that that uh, he he says that. So um, funny. Yeah. Congrats to Mark. We'll have to remind him. Um, so, yes, the next one is from Watch Fires Mitch. Ooh, um, okay. Hey, Watch Mitch. Fires Mitch. I like watching Fires. Who doesn't? With Mitch, though. <laughs> I don't, yeah, know, I don't sure. know Mitch very well. So this is this is a uh, this is a two parter. Uh, but I'm just gonna read it as one. It says, "Other side of the door. Are you as tired as I am of horror stereotype of quote foreign housekeeper who exists solely to be audience Cliff Notes version of the mythology of the movie?" Yeah, I mean, yeah. honestly, I didn't really think of it much during the movie, but once it was pointed out, I was kind of like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think okay. the only difference in this one is they actually are in India. It's not like they have it wasn't, like right, yeah. a Jamaican housekeeper. It's who not like Paranormal Activity movie. Two, where the the Mexican housekeepers into like what a, what is it Santa yeah. Muerta or whatever, and just like Santa Maria, you know, doing incense throughout the house and. Uh, yeah, no, I, I sort of think that's I sort of agree that like because they're in India, it's like slightly different. Like they're on her turf, you know, sure. um, like so she's not the foreign one here. That's the I think, you know, the one point, the one correction I'd make. But uh, no, I mean, it's definitely like not a great stereotype, <laughs> you know, like it's not ideal. So I'd much prefer the like just regular priest guy who tells you that it's the devil. All housekeepers can communicate with the dead. That is a yeah. fact. That's true. true. Yeah. You learned that at housekeeper school. Yeah. <laughs> so, next it's tweet like comes to us uh, from uh, at Nerds of Gore. Uh, this is, the the question is favorite. Are you afraid of the dark episode? I oh. really don't remember enough of them to be honest with you. I, I wasn't no, really yeah. into that. Probably the I mean, one with Ryan Gosling. Most of them, but I do not. I cannot. Mark tell you would a thousand topic. percent have an answer for this question. Yeah. So yeah, maybe, sorry. Maybe we'll ask He'd be it racking again his week. brains to try and pick just one. Um, sorry, I Beth. was more of a Count Ducula man myself. Oh, that was good. <laughs> it's real good. Yeah. Real good. Uh, so the next one comes from uh, our buddy Robale at Robale. Uh, better '90s teen comedy hunk turned movie dad. Oh, I'm excited Elton already. Elton from Clueless slash Other Side of the Door, or Mike Dexter from Can Hardly Wait slash Twilight. Already answered it. Oh it's no, it's Sisto. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, who yeah. is the second? He's guy? talking about uh, the guy who's Mike the Dexter. jock in Can Hardly Wait, yeah, can't hardly and wait. he's like he's the vampire dad or whatever in uh, i've not twilight. seen uh, twilight so i can't speak he's to not really daddish of... in the same way that sisto has achieved yeah <laughs> sisto <laughs> has sisto. gotten all the dad achievements i feel like mm-hmm. he's That's leveled up to dad uh so yeah there you go we're going sisto here yeah, clear uh, winner so the next one comes from at... sisto versus candy man now that's a good question oh. <laughs> Sisto versus Cisco. Sisto, sis- <laughs> <laughs> when were we talking? Oh, Thunstone? that'd be a that great a image. I'd love, to see, I'd love to see that made into an image. Um, the next one comes to us from at Durface. That's D I R F A C E. Okay. Um, he says, uh, "Loving BGH, did you ever cover my favorite film, Extro? That's no. X T R O. I've never seen it." Yeah, we've I've seen that one. It's been a long time, but no, we haven't covered it. No. Oh, wow. I am like not even familiar with this. It's kind of a basket but... casey type of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Holy shit. This, this looks, looks amazing. It was yeah. one of those uh like I always saw the cover at my video store when I was a kid. It was one of those I movies. I feel like we gotta add this to the list. Oh yeah. I am on board for it. this looks absolutely just bonkers. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Extra. Um Okay, good shout, Dareface. Uh, we will give that a look, hopefully, sometime in the future. Um, so next one comes to us from Claire Quilty. She says, sometimes it's better not to question characters' choices because the film crumbles, but they just need a grief counseling. Hashtag <laughs> SBGH. Fair. I mean, yeah, she's 100% right. It's, uh, it's yeah. sad times. Yeah. 
That is never brought up. It's worth mentioning. Yeah. Like, hey, maybe um, we should go talk to just, somebody. Maybe just have a solid talk. <laughs> no, I think the, the I think the Sisto maybe tries to throw that out. No, at some point he's mm. kind of like mm. I don't think so. No. no. All right. Well, he should. They need grief counseling. They have a supernatural housekeeper. Right. That's that's true. Uh, we got two here from our buddy B Lassiter. Uh, that's at B E Lassiter. Uh, so he, he asks, and these are uh, from the live stream for anyone who's been enjoying the pre-show uh, live stream available only to patrons. Yes. If Eric never wants another yard, what is he going to yell at kids to get <laughs> off of? It's a good point, and it, he, it's funny that he brings that up tonight because I had this flashback earlier because it's like the first night we got the windows open and. Last summer, I, I talked. I'm sure I talked about this in the show, but a bunch of kids like rang and run, ring and run to me, and I just lost my shit. I was so angry. Oh my god, I cannot remember <laughs> yeah. you talked oh, about that on the show, but that is amazing. talked about it. Yeah, yeah. Because I called it something. Out. I called it ding dong, ding dong ditch, ditch. Or ding dong yeah. ditch. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Casey started telling a story we didn't want him to finish about what they called it in his neighborhood. Oh, oh God. I did I think, not. I think I'm remembering this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Eric, uh, he's uh, going to yell at kids. man. I don't need a yard. It's like, oh, well, it's no good. I just want to I want to grill. You, wanna, well, you could have a like, stoop. You know what? I went this whole winter without there. having to, to move snow. I want yeah, a cool. garden. I want to have a garden. Oh, to, stop it. Tomatoes. He's not going to garden, Joe. Shut right up. No, they, like, fuck, I'm not, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> can't wait I till Joe's. I did it for like a year. And that was uh, it. it yes. It's cool. every, next spring listen, was like, fuck that noise. We don't have to talk about it again, but every day you wake up in a house and you just go, what is going to break today? Yeah. <laughs> what is yeah. decomposing slowly that's going to just ruin Eat my life shit. and I don't know it yet? Me. And I'm the answer, thing. John, the answer is literally Darts. everything. Yeah, I know. Uh, all right, one more here from B. Lassiter. This is actually our last, although I'm going to do one more uh, refresh. He but uh, is, he worked up with that house question. Is, uh, B. Lassiter asks, is Count Duckula the darkness that flaps in the night, or is that someone else? <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah. Count don't Duckula know. was a vampire duck that drank uh, tomato juice, and he yeah. had like a... He could teleport throughout time or something. Yeah. From his Came castle. on after Banana Man. Banana Man, yep, another classic. What was it Danger Mouse? Danger Mouse. Yeah. He did cocaine and then he ran really fast. <laughs> Is that yeah, what it was? Danger if you ever go back to it, he sniffs a flower and then his eyes bug out of his head and he goes really fast. Really? I do not remember yeah. that. Yeah, I don't remember that at all. Wait. Or I might, might be thinking, yeah. wait, am I thinking Danger Mouse? Danger Mouse? What did I, I say? You said Mighty Mouse, but I can't. I don't remember. I think I said Danger Mouse, didn't I? Yeah, Mighty Mouse. To answer his question, though, that was unfortunately Darkwing Duck. No. Ah, uh, there you go. What? It was the oh, darkest. Oh, the darkest that, in the that night. flaps in the night. Okay, Darkwing Duck. Thank you, Casey. No. Um. Did so you hear we... they're bringing Ducktales back? Yeah, they posted the first image of <laughs> in cartoon for like old school oh, cartoon uh, form. Yeah. Yeah. The all right, I got one more here. Launchpad so this, McQuack. This speaking, one did not of Fuller House. The, yeah. This one did not have the ask BGH hashtag, but I did. I did find it. Don't it's read from. That. Uh, Don't fucking read that. <laughs> at Deep Fried Chaos asks, "Ever seen the video Dead?" Oh yeah. Yes, yeah. I have. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It is a shot on VHS zombie feature from the mid '80s. It's on. Mm -hmm. It was on Netflix for a long time. That's how I saw it. Yeah. It's It's real bad, but in that kind of way that I really enjoyed. Yeah. It's '87. Um, yeah. It's yeah. It's got yeah. a great cover art too. That movie yeah, scared the yeah. shit out of me when I was a kid. Um, really? John, is there anything on BGH Classics? That's where we ask people to tweet us fun things they heard in old episodes. Eesh. You know, while you look it up, Joe, why don't you tell me how awesome is Kimmy Gibbler? Oh, she oh, is son of a bitch. Like you mentioned it on the last episode, treasure. like she has not acted in twenty years, and she has not skipped a beat no. of being Kimmy Gibbler. She's like, just been holding that character like in her basement. It's amazing. Really you're a son of a bitch for sneaking that That's in no bitch. we don't have any new bgh classics but, but uh, if you're going back uh hair patrons and listening to old episodes you hear something funny something stupid or something you just want to shame us with hit us up hashtag bgh classics i prefer less shame yeah. like i got enough shame in my I'm life already, i'm sure so. i've said some racist things i could use more and... shame i think shame makes you better john don't you think makes mm, you a better person yes. mm. it's all about how, how you the react mom to the from uh well you know, from the movie would have said, I don't think. From Full House. <laughs> the mom from Full House was dead, Joe, so well, too soon. Becky? Becky wasn't mom. Well, maybe she's on the other side of the door. 
Ooh. There you go. Tying. Boom. It's deep. Brought it all together. No, the Olsen twins are on the other side of the door. You know what I picked up on the last episode, and you may have caught this like the first, but DJ's last name yeah. from her husband is Fuller. And that's why the show is called Fuller, Fuller House. House. Christ. Christ. You get yeah. that? I like... There's another side of a door I'd like it's to It's about as clever through. as most of your oh. word of the day, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Get me out of here. Um, so, J.J. Abrams returns to our lives next week. I get some Fuller House gifts huh? for the show. It's just yeah. to me. Here's the thing. Stephanie is now a DJ, John. And you know what her DJ name is? DJ Tanner. <laughs> Nice. You get it? Yeah, I think I get it. I don't but know if you do though, John. But you're that's not the laughing. sister's name. <laughs> I think I got it. <sighs> uh, so, here we are. Comet Junior Junior. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at Fuller, Fuller House pictures now. Okay. Um, next week, what are we doing? Ten, Ten Cloverfield, Cloverfield Lane. Lane. Yes, that sounds awesome. I'm super yeah. pumped for that. John Goodman. Uh, John, really quickly, video. If you want to see us on video every Eric, week live while we record. How would Hold you do on. That? No, no, no. What? Step back. What? Oh, boy. The, we should have talked about up front the big interview you did this week. Uh, oh. I mean, it wasn't a, I wouldn't call it a big interview. I, well, it was a nice I, interview. It was a cool uh, interview. I sat down over Skype and I had a chat with the uh, Mark Corvin who composed The Witch. And we talked a little bit about The Witch. I asked him if he was aware how much people loved Black Phillip, and he was not. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, boy. Um, I was so, yeah, actually, if you go to really youtube.com cool. slash BGH video, you can check it out. Yeah. No, it's on, it's on our site, too. Yeah. It's on, a, it's on the web page that this podcast part. also belongs to. It was to. fun. I, I, um, yeah, and I'm setting up some more, like, Skype interviews. I figured the worst thing about interviews is having to transcribe them. Yeah. And, and like, who, no, reads, I, who reads interviews anyway? So, you know. That was probably the first piece of content I've actually, like, partaken in on the site. Nice. In years. Thanks, like, yeah. Joe. Thank you. Smile squad. Good times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, check that out youtube.com slash BGH video. If you want to check out this video live every week, including our scintillating pre show conversation, which usually involves me going to the bathroom a bunch, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> patreon.com slash bloody good horror. You can find out how you can support us and in return. Get a bunch of goodies, including access to every single back episode, which is um, a lot of people seem to be enjoying. So, also, bloodygoodhorror.com. It's a website. Mark curates it every day. There's awesome new reviews, so check that out. As well, I guess that's it. Next week, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll talk to you then. See you. Goodbye, everyone. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>